Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. Now I've often had requests for how to make lava, so I thought I would share my thoughts on that. So I'm not going to do this complete scene, I won't be doing the particles, but I did want to show you my process for creating the lava. So let's make a start. So let's check on our project setup. 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second, duration of 10 seconds. So let's first of all import our assets. So click on import and from the assets folder, let's grab everything that we can see there and import it. Now we need to make another couple of groups to accommodate all of this. So object new group, and one more object new group. So I'm going to grab these objects that have got flow and I'm going to bring them into that top group there. And let's just temporarily turn it off. And then let's put the volcano into the group there, group one. So now that's sitting in a group above the sky. And let's just increase the size of that sky so it's filling the frame like that. Now the volcano you'll notice has got this weird sort of fringing on it and that's because motion has misinterpreted the alpha that has come out of Photoshop. So to fix that we're going to come to filters and color and levels and we're going to switch to alpha and then we're just going to grab that black value and crunch it down till that white line disappears like that. And let's also, while we're here, just come back to RGB and let's just darken this down really quite a lot like that. And let's do the same to the sky. Let's come to the sky. Let's add a color and levels. And again, just use this control to darken it way down like that. So already we've got a lot more drama going on. So let's now turn back on this group here. Let's turn off these top two. So we're left with flow A. First thing I want to do with all of these is to reset their anchor point so that it's the, at the top of the object here. So I'm going to select the anchor point tool. Obviously I need to have my overlays turned on. Then I can just grab the anchor point and move it up to the top like that. So let's turn that one off. Let's turn the next one on. And again, let's grab its anchor point and just move it to the top of that kind of flow there. Same again here and just move this to there. So now each of them has got an anchor point at the top there and then when we want to grow them they will grow from that point. So that's going to be good. Then let's just turn them all on and let's set their blend mode to add. Let's turn off B and C and let's concentrate on A. Let's maybe just scale it down a little bit and let's move it down so we want the lava to kind of flow off the top of the mountain. So we're going to just rotate it like that. Let's maybe duplicate this. So right click duplicate, come to properties and rotation. And let's flip it 180 through Y. And then let's maybe just scale it down a little bit. So it looks a little bit different from the other one. Move it across on X just a little bit perhaps. Then let's maybe turn on flow B. Flow B is much too big. Let's just scale it way down. Actually, let's just turn on the overlays and switch back to the basic transform tool and just move this, I think, but manually. So let's have a, a flow that's kind of coming off the other one there. That's probably quite nice. Let's turn on flow C. Again, it's much too big. Let's scale it down. And again, with our overlays turned on, we can find a nice place for it. Let's have a look at the overall results. You know, we could keep going with these. Maybe actually let's add one more. Let's duplicate flow C. Let's again flip it through 180 on Y. And this time let's move it up to sort of there. I think that's kind of just, you know, to give you a basic idea, that's probably pretty good. So then what we can do is we can actually turn this off. We don't actually need to see it. And then we're going to make a new group. And into this group, we're going to come to the library, generators, and we're going to add cellular. Bring that in here. So again, I'm going to turn on the overlays and I'm going to come down and I'm going to grab the distort tool. 
And I want to bring this in. So we're kind of on the edge of the volcano there. Bring this corner in. So we're kind of there. And let's maybe just move it out like that. And then let's do the same for the other side. So as you can see, we're kind of basically making this look as it's coming closer and closer to the camera as it uh, comes down the volcano. What we can now do is we can add to this group containing the cellular an image mask. So add image mask. And then we can use this group two, which has got our flow objects in it and just bring that into the mask source there and then switch the source channel to luminance. And now you can see we've got this sort of kind of lava effect. First of all, let's just reduce the speed of that lava down to maybe even something like 0.15. It wants to be nice and slow. And the other thing I want to do is I want to add filters and tiling and offset. And this will sort of make the lava flow down the mountain. So I'm going to come to the vertical offset and I'm going to add a ramp behavior. So add parameter behavior ramp and I'm going to have an end value of negative three. And hopefully you can see that that's now sort of dripping down and that's quite good. So then to this group, let's add filters and stylize and indent. Also want to add color levels. So you can see that the indent filter is giving us a little bit of sort of sense of texture to it. Let's maybe just crank up the softness quite a bit. Let's reduce the brightness, maybe just increase the ambient, something like that. Just play with this till you get a kind of look you like. It's just increasing the highlight brightness there a bit. See what you think looks good. And then with this levels, let's give it some color. So let's come to the blue and just reduce the blue down like that till we get a yellow. And then let's also come to the RGB and use this white value to crank up the output. So what I want to do is I want to give it a little bit of glow. So I'm going to take this group and I'm going to group it. So right click group and then to that group that I've just made, I'm going to add glow and neon. And that's all way too much. Let's reduce it down to about 20 or something. Uh, sort of adds a little bit of extra interest there. But you'll remember that when we are adding these flow objects, we moved the anchor point to the top. And now I want to show you what we're going to do with that. So let's take flow A and let's come to behaviors and basic motion grow shrink. And let's set the scale to 25%. And now it looks a little bit more like the lava is flowing down the sides of the volcano. Maybe 25% is too much, but let's maybe go for 20. And then let's copy that grow shrink onto the others. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key, drag it onto all of the others like this. Actually, that's really not looking too bad, given that I didn't spend a lot of time finessing that. One other thing I want to do is I want to give, give the top of the volcano a little bit more brightness. So I'm going to select the volcano and I'm going to right click and I'm going to make clone layer. And then I'm going to add to it a color and levels. And let's brighten it up like this. And let's reduce the blue again, just to make it nice and warm like that. And then what we're going to do is take the clone layer, add the rectangle mask tool and just mask off the top like that. And then we can take the mask and feather it like that. Maybe move up this uh, mask a little bit. So we're just affecting more of the top like that. You can see the effect that's had. And one other little thing we could do is take this group that's got the, the lava in it. Not the one with the, the neon, but the, the lava one. And come down and turn on its drop shadow. So I don't know whether we can see. Just kind of helps to lift it off the background a little bit more. You can adjust that to taste, maybe even go for full opacity and a little bit more blur. Just see what you think works. So anyway, that's the effect. And obviously I added in some particles and maybe, you know, if there's a lot of interest, I can do an extra tutorial to explain how I did that. But I just wanted to show you the basic sort of the basic lava concept, you know, without going into too much detail. 
and hopefully that's given you something useful to work with. So thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.